See, see what you're speaking about is intentionality. Uh, and MFHA has long had the, the uh, belief that um, reaching out with intention purposefully to uh, underrepresented groups as, as a, a source of supply chain, you know, minority mm -hmm. businesses, women owned businesses, LGBTQ businesses, mm -hmm. veteran owned businesses with an intention of helping them grow. Um, that not only extends your brand, it adds some cultural authenticity, some depth to your brand. It's not just about selling, it's about giving, it's about helping other businesses. But it also is a way where people say, if that's the kind of business that, that really helps another business, um, I, I want to go to work for them. So that's a good uh, play to you, Gail. You folks have a world-class supply diversity program. Is that something that you've, you've thought about leveraging as a way to, to increase your recruiting? So we have, and as a matter of fact, you're on my list as well to call <laughs> for assistance <laughs> with something. <laughs> um, it, we, we have, and it's something that we thought about doing. Um, every year we have a goal of increasing the number of diverse suppliers that we use, and diversity is, is defined very broadly for us. Uh, because we uh, believe in an environment of inclusion, right? And that's what we're promoting right now. I belong, you belong, we belong here together. Um, and there's a quote uh, that I told Lewis a little bit earlier that I heard today that I, I just have to share. And it is that diversity is being invited to the dance and inclusion is being asked to dance, right? Um, and so we're focused on the sense of belonging in our culture. Uh, and focused on the individual employee and their experience, their journey from hire until they retire. And that's what we're trying to talk a lot about to let people know we're taking care of your whole person when you come here. And it's not, it's not just a business for us. Uh, we ask ourselves, why am I doing this? Do, do I love food? Do I love feeding people? What, is this important to me? And I think that you will find that most people that are here are passionate about food, passionate about feeding people. And, and that's a big deal. And that's something that we all share. I want to I want to shift gears a little bit uh, again, back to Kelly. She said, uh, people want to be safe. Am I part of a community? What do you stand for? Um, uh, meet me where I live. You know, Kelly, let's tell me a little bit more about that later. For my well-being, what do executives, leaders have to do to create a culture that three years, five years, 10 years from now, people from all packages want to work for them. Mm -hmm. What do the leaders have to do? What do we have to change so that our, our industry and these brands can be more successful in recruiting Gen Z, millennials, uh, people from, from all, all aspects of their employment pool? Uh, uh, Eric, I'm, you want to go first, Liz? You're on. Oh. Uh, Kale, do you want to go while, while Lewis tries to get himself situated? I'm sorry, is that me or Kelly? Yeah, Gail, why don't you go? Lewis is trying to get his, his mic straight. What do, you, what do you think the, the executives have to do differently for, for us to create that culture where people are going to want to stay? We have so to really recruit our employees. I think that every executive and executive team as a whole has to embrace the idea of belonging, right? Embrace the idea of we are dry, trying to drive a culture in an environment where we are not only passionate about the food that we serve and the communities that we serve, but are passionate about the employees that we have within our company. And uh, diversity and inclusion are important. Uh, and it's an imperative. And, it, and it's not just another project or an initiative. Uh, and I think that if you can't get that tone at the top, that's not just one person. One person cannot drive it. It has to be your entire executive team that drives that message. And if that's an authentic message and it's felt to be an authentic message, that will catch on fire. What does this belonging sure. look like? You know, what is that? What is it? What is it? How does it how does it show itself? You know, so so how do I know if, if this is a place where people feel like they belong? But you know what? I'm going to, can I kick that one to Kelly? Because I've talked to Kelly about this before and she has a great perspective on it. I know I'm not the moderator of this, but you know, Gary. You, you, yes, you, <laughs> you can kick it to me. Yeah. I mean, I think, so I think this is a, this is an amazing conversation because I think um, belonging is, Gail started talking about it really. It is about embracing the whole person. It is about meeting them where they live. It is about understanding if this company stands for the same things I do, 
And then it's, it's at the end of the day, it's about how do you take something, whether you're a small company or big and make it feel like I, I, I belong, right? You belong, we belong, right? And uh, there's lots of ways to do that. But more COVID taught us that we can, maybe it's not as, as good as a hug, but we can feel connected this way, right? So I think for big companies out there with 50 to 100,000 employees, now's the perfect time to think about how do we connect in a way that we, we, we were forced to do it in COVID, how do we connect in a different way so that some, someone really does feel like I'm accepted here, I belong. It's one of the most powerful things about this restaurant industry in that the, we are a place where people can be seen, both from the employee standpoint and from the customer standpoint. If we think they're just coming for food, we're wrong. They're coming to belong and be seen in, in a restaurant, right? And to break right. bread and to have to make connections, right? It's about the joy of making those connections. I think the other thing to remember too, in terms of the storytelling is remember where they're going, right? They're going and looking at Google reviews and they're going and looking at Glassdoor. And so you, can, you can't manage what's being said, but you can manage Glassdoor and you can manage some of those things and make sure that the best stories are being highlighted. Because I love No Kid Hungry and I love how much Denny's is given back to No Kid Hungry, but not everybody may know that. And so there's way there are ways to make people feel like you value the same thing I do. I can belong there. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, belonging is a really special yeah. word that I think um, we uniquely in this industry. Uh, there are others, too, probably. I'm a little biased. But in this industry, we have such power in creating a place where people belong and are accepted. Well, well. Lewis, I want to make sure you feel like you belong. So I want to get, see what you have to add to this. Well, my mic is working now. So I, I'll just say this, you know, without sounding boastful or, you know, overconfident. But I think we just need to be better in, in our company at who we are and what got us to where we are. And I'll use this example. We don't want to change the thing that got us here. We've been around for 37 years because of the culture that we created. And I use that word a lot. And I heard the word authenticity used early on. We wanna remain true to who we are. And from the beginning, when that single mom would call up and say, well, I can't make it to work because my sister bailed out on me, I don't have a babysitter. Will you come on, we'll keep the baby here. You know, and it's that caring. We have to be better at that. Executive, you see how I'm dressed today? I dress like they dress. When I walk in, I'm not better than them. I'm one of them, you know? And it's that kind of culture, that caring culture, and I can't say it enough, that people need to feel like they belong. And if they look different or you act different, then you are different. Well, Lewis, you just hit on so, something that our industry, uh, because we have an industry, we, have, we come together at conferences, we share our ideas, we tell you what we're going to put out on a menu, we and we compete, right? Right. Why can't we collaborate around childcare? Why can't we, you know, big corporations are, are, are building daycare centers so that their, their moms and, and dads can come to work, leave their kids downstairs, go up in the building, go to work. Why can't we collaborate around that? Why don't we find ways to address it? Because we have challenges that face our industry. Mm -hmm. We can't raise the, the minimum wage as fast as people would like it to. You know, we, we work off thin margins. And so it's a challenge. And, you know, we don't have all the health care coverages that we'd like to have. But collaboratively, we might be able to come up with some solutions. And so if we're going to get out of the box, let's get out of the damn box and really talk about the things. Because if, if, if we can't figure this, I heard something um, in one of the sessions I was I was on. And this is not not really news, but we sometimes need to be reminded if if mom's going to go to work and she's making $15 an hour, but she got to pay $15 an hour for the kids to go. To, it's better for her to stay home. So what's your industry doing to give me an incentive to, to say, Hey, well, I should stay here. I mean, so what other out of the box things or what other challenges are you having? What other things do you think are going to need to be on the horizon as we get closer to full opening, we're not even fully open. You know, I live there, Cape Cod. What's going to happen when everybody starts coming to the beach? Where are those people coming from? So, what, what do you what do you think is going to be the future's going to look like in a few months? Well, Jerry, I'm going to just be honest, and I think that it's going to be a lot of the major corporations, the bigger entities that are going to change their philosophy, and they're going to change their hiring practices. Like you say, Mod Pizza, what they're doing, right, is working and it's a good model. And I can recall 
hiring employees that some of the other brands out there would not hire. But once we brought them in and taught them skills, right? How to be on time, how to show up for work, how to dress, how to act, how to be productive. Then they come in and slip them a business card, right? So when I go back to the Rub Initiative, the more businesses that we can help survive, they become mentors like myself. That now their kids and their kids' friends begin to think that it's okay to have a job and it's okay to go to work because I'm working for someone that care about me, someone that look like me, someone that has the same values that I do. There's a lot of people out there to work, but will they get an opportunity to work? Yeah. And can we be the industry that teaches people how to how to work? If you don't know how to work, maybe no one ever showed you how to mop the floor. We're going to show you all with the intention of giving you an upward mobility track. So, Gail, is that something? Could we be the industry that says we teach work ethic here? We teach you what, what compound interest is. We teach you life skills that no, you ain't going to be with us forever. But we, you're going to remember that we taught you things that are going to make life better for your kids. Could that be our industry? So there's no reason why it couldn't be our industry. I don't know about compound interest, but I know that there's a lot of things that we can teach. And uh, you have to, that's again, you have to, with intentionality, create a program that teaches these skills to folks. And so we've created uh, a program that we're rolling out this year. And we've got three years to roll out a number of programs all the way up to providing college credit in the hospitality area uh, for folks that want to take that type of coursework providing GEDs for folks that need a GED, right? And then we have um, skills training that, we're, that we do on a regular basis for people that are managers. I'm a manager now. I wasn't a manager before. How do you manage, right? How do you manage people? How do you manage a restaurant? How do you manage schedules? So those are things that we do now already, right? These are the skills that are being built. We invest in our people. And you have to do it with intentionality, though. Doing one little webinar on something is not... No. It's not a learning no. and development program. So we, it has to be a full program. I'll add to that that managing, once you become a manager, how do you manage your own money? How do you yeah. manage your own household? That's what I'm saying, compound interest. I, I, I'm not proud, but this is I didn't learn what compound interest was until I got out of out of culinary. Out of culinary. And that was just too late. So if you we're, we're talking to young people and say we want you to learn how money works. So you can take care of our money, yes, right here in the restaurant. Yeah. So that yeah. when you get money, you can go home and take care of your money. You can teach your brothers and sisters. I think that's a winning um, winning opportunity. Chris, I know that we, we've had Q&A out there, so I'm going to check in with you as the as the big, uh, big kahuna here. Do we have any questions from the crowd? So, yeah, we have a couple of questions that are coming in, and two are related to background checks and hiring on the spot. So the first question is really just how do you handle those background checks with hiring on the spot? How does that process work? So we have a background check provider that provides us with our results within about 48 to 72 hours on a normal basis. So if you come into the restaurant, you make it through the interview, you're a, a candidate that we like and we want to work with, we're going to hire you on the spot. You can start, but you don't start out on the floor. You don't start handling money. You don't start it. You start with training. So we're going to start you with the training on the onboarding process that takes a while anyway, it takes one, two or three days anyway. Right. And hopefully <laughs> we have a good instinct <laughs> and we don't have to worry about that background check in the long run, but it will come in and we still will review it. Right. And we still will take it under advisement, especially if there's something in there that we don't, you know, we can't have on the floor in the restaurants or or you know, around other people, but that's how we're we're, we're choosing to treat um, the background check issue. Uh, uh, go ahead, Chris. You got another? You got a follow up? So yeah, this is somewhat related to the question. So it's really asking to address the frustration of you know having an applicant come in who says that they can pass that said background check, but then they fail to do so and just kind of delaying the process overall. How do you deal with that frustration? And, you know, how do you kind of try to address that? Is there any way to try to get a head start on that problem? I, I'm not sure that you can get a head start on something you don't know anything about. That's one of those corners that you can't look around, right? Especially if a candidate says, no problem, you're not going to have any type of issue with me on my background check or my my drug test or my, my credit history, depending on what state you live in. I mean, th that's just something that you face on a regular basis. Um, and hopefully those types of issues are much less than the success stories that you can point to. Yeah. 
And I'll add something to that. Um, I did some work with some hotels and be not that long ago. And one of the questions that came up was people came in, their resumes were sloppy or they came late or whatever. And they said, well, we're not going to interview them. Well, that's not happening now because because we're interviewing everyone. But I'm, I'm, but the point I'm making is we ought to take those as a teaching moment. Say, you know what? The background check came back. You knew it wasn't going to. Dude, that's not smart. It's not good, you know? If you had told me, maybe we could have worked through it or not. Um, but I, I got to encourage you. I think we got to find ways to try to keep pushing people back towards the right trajectory in their lives. And I know that some of them people, they, they learn how to last in their family members. They learn how, because the environment they're in, you know, when you don't have things, you, you struggle. So, so uh, Louis, do you have anything to add to, to um, what Rails has said about how do you handle these background checks and non-traditional uh, employees? Because I know you have some, some second chance hiring. Well, I would say, first of all, giving a person an opportunity and give them a chance. And you, again, will never know what the background check may come with. But if you don't give that person a chance up front, they're going to go somewhere else or you don't get that opportunity. So I think that that's a great approach. And we have not considered that. And I may be adopting that, Gail. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, the other thing that I would say is maybe, you know, nowadays, some of the things that showed up that would be less than desirable or would be acceptable could be looked at differently today. Yeah. You know, people change. And that's the thing that, you know, we need to understand and accept. People change and put in an environment where the positive outweigh the negative and they can move toward a more positive way of living and a lifestyle, be inspired and encouraged and motivated in that environment. I think, you know, we should consider that moving forward. And the background check is just that. It talks about the background. What about the foreground? Yeah. So especially when things in a background check that come back that are so old, 20, 30 yeah. years old, that's not the same person. If you did something as a kid and you're an adult now, I agree with you. Why can't you consider giving someone a chance, giving someone an opportunity, and they may end up being your best employee. You never know. And there's another way where the industry could come and collaborate around this. There is some there are organizations that are doing some good work in this arena. And and, and just what you said, Gail, you know, what this is is really not a, a problem you know in our industry now if it has to do with money and theft there are some things that certainly wouldn't work but you know we have people being kicked out because well we don't we don't take anyone well maybe we should collaborate on you know what would be a good policy for industry to consider here is some and then would we publish that make that available to our other employees to say hey look at you know we're trying to give second chance hiring here are the kind of things that are good these things not so good you know, but we, we tend not to communicate as well as, as, as we could. Um, Chris, do you have another question there? Yeah, I think we have a time for about one or two more. So we have one question regarding the use of new technologies to improve recruiting efforts or reducing need for staff, et cetera. So how is technology playing a part in this labor shortage and how can you use it to either find new people or, you know, reconnect with existing employees that may have left due to COVID? Technology? Well, Those I, I will say again, you know, we have not been as current with technology and stand up on it and primarily due to uh, the cost, right? Budgeting and having the cost to stay current with all of the new technology. But we do recognize that we do need to improve. And I mentioned this early on, our website needs an update and improvement. Um, going out and putting together testimonials and presenting again a great story and to your point jerry you know we need to come up with that storyteller and go out there and tell the good stories about the brand and the company and um so we're looking at new technology in other ways but i think one thing that i will say that we were blessed that we partnered with the third party delivery service doordash was also the charter partner for the rub initiative but because of that, that's a, a marketing tool as well as a delivery program that we found out. And it's yeah. helped us to be exposed in many ways. But anyway, um, yes, we definitely want to look at ways of improving our website technology uh, that we tell a better story of who we are and what we're all about. Hey, Jerry, yeah, well, if, I can, if I can add, Jerry, um, I, I wholeheartedly think there are options out there. If you have a phone, you, you potentially have enough technology because 
that this generation doesn't necessarily want to see something really polished because then you look really corporate and you don't look real. Lewis, you're real. So that's the story I want to hear. I want to hear about your story because you're the epitome of the, the dream, right? So I, I would I would also just offer, there are lots of unique ways. TikTok, you have a TikTok account. I, I use my daughter's, I don't have one, but TikTok's quickly becoming the number one way to get people interested in about you as an employer. Uh, and that's that's backed up by by information and insights from Snag Job, we partner with them. So I think there's lots of you know unique ways. And then by the way, there are so many small companies now that are trying to get on this bandwagon of getting to you, getting to both of you, Lewis and, and Gail, and you, Jerry, because of your influence, uh, with their new apps and they'll like match.com approach, right? Here's the employee that's right in your area, three miles away. He's already filled this out, he or she, and then matching it up with schedules where the manager doesn't have to do anything. They can just the schedule's matched up. When they click and swipe right, it's got the, the, the match already there and that person could show up then and be hired that day, Gail, right? So <laughs> I think there are there are uh, ways that they the barriers to entry in technology, just like they have for for food and for getting food, right? We've came so far. I think there are, are, are solutions out there that by the dozen coming out in, in the way of just the gig wow. economy or not, right? One, one quick to build on our, our certified storytellers, we should have Instagram captains. Somebody, these are the young people who work for you. You yep. are going to be my certified Instagram captain. It's your job to go out there. And I'm going to give you one hour a day or whatever it is to go out there and do nothing but tell our story. There you go. Let's see. Or go out there and shoot a little video for us. And whoever comes up with the best video, you're going to get $500. But you make them do the work. Um, and they talk to each other. Because, listen, i seen that TikTok thing. That's over my head. I know that. Um, uh, Dale, anything on the technology you want to add? Because we only got three minutes, and I want to want each of you to give me, you know, a one one one, you know, one thirty second uh, closing closing comment. Um, Gail, anything on technology that, that you could add? I, I don't have anything on technology. I do. I do have engage, engage in the, with the executives, engage with the employees, engage with your communities, and be purposeful, intentional about what you're doing and who you are um, as a company, right? As a brand, it's very important. So. That's what I'd want people to, to take away. And, and the on the spot hiring is, it's the ticket. I'm telling you, it's the ticket. Yeah. Engage, purpose, and intention. That's good. How about you, Lewis? You know, what, what, what words of wisdom do you want to leave with the, with the audience before we shut it down? In all things, get an understanding. If we understand what the problem is, come up with a solution. We don't have a problem. <laughs> Sounds very simple, but sometimes, you know, the things that, 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 that we, 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 we need to focus on making things simple. How about you, Kelly? You were, you've been a great um, great backdrop in terms of teaching us and setting us up and framing this and adding lots of insight. What are your, what's your closing comments? I do, I do think you have to re-recruit. I think as an industry, we've got work to do just to continue to tell people how special it is. And it's keep me safe. Help me be a part of your community and belong. And then understand, you know, I'm I'm, I, I'm more than just the, the employee. I'm a, I'm a whole person, and and that's been talked about. So I would lean right back into that. It can be done. It it will it, it will it will be again. Right? Collaboration, though, Jerry. I love what you said about that. Um, we got to keep collaborating to solve these big issues. Yeah. So so for me, I think the industry needs to collaborate. We need to play offense. We we sit sitting and play deal. We cannot win this game if we play defense. Play offense. Be creative. Um, but most off, most importantly, be authentic. We got to tell them that this is hot damn work. You know what? <laughs> I busted my tail, but now I have a good quality of life. I live in a nice neighborhood. You know, I got a few coins in the bank. And me, Jerry Fernandez, I was a knucklehead in high school. If I can do it, you can do it too. So get out there, tell people the truth about our industry. Look at Lewis. You started from nothing, right? And, exactly. And so so, so, so I want to thank you all for being so um, gracious with your time and your insights. I think there's a lot that we 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 shared, a lot of learning, and there's some things that we could all follow up on. So, so I want to kick it back to you and say thanks for having us, um, Chris, and the Food Institute, the DMA. You, you, you all, you all, folks are great, Chris. Thank you, Jerry. I also want to extend some thanks to Gail, Kelly, Lewis, and Susanna for joining us today. I thank you, also <laughs> and we also would like to invite you to continue the conversation on DMA's LinkedIn page. So with that said, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Great job, everyone.